What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Crossroads Rebuild Classic Edition, where we're back working on the 55 Chevy. Now, before we get started, I need your help. As I mentioned in the first video, or the first video on this car, I am new to restoration of classic cars. I'm thrilled to be working on this one. I'm excited about it. I'm loving it uh, so far. Um, but that being said, I am a novice, a newbie. I've worked on cars for years and years, but most of my experience, especially if you guys have been watching uh, for any length of time, is on newer cars, rebuilding wrecks, so on and so forth. Uh, excited to take this next chapter, but I'm in a learning phase. Now I'm excited because a lot of things about these cars are simple, but what that does mean is I don't necessarily know a ton about them, their history. I've been studying, I've been researching, I've been learning, been talking to people. Uh, in fact, some of the channels that I've watched, uh, YouTube channels that I've watched in my research, uh, at least one or two of you have actually reached out to me because you've watched uh, the video on this car as well. Um, I'll be totally honest with you, I've been shocked and thrilled with the response to this car. Uh, as folks have been um, watching the video and subscribing to the channel, leaving comments and likes, I appreciate all of that support, uh, both for me, but most importantly for this car. Uh, this car is deserving of that support, so thank you so much, especially to those of you uh, who are brand new here watching for this car. But all that being said, I need your help. As I'm learning, Feel free if I say something that's incorrect to go ahead and correct me. Uh, for example, in last week's video, I called this a 55 Chevy Coupe. To me, a coupe is a two-door car, uh, but I understand there's a lot more nuance than that to these older classics. Um, somebody else commented they called it a post. Um, I understand it has something to do with the fact that it's actually got a B pillar versus no B pillar uh, there with the door and the rear window and all that. Um, but hey, feel free to educate me. Uh, send me resources. My email address and my website are in the uh, description of this video. Feel free to reach out to me that way or just leave it in the comments. Um, but if I say something that's incorrect, I won't be offended if you go ahead and correct me fill me in on some more information. I'll just take that as education and I'll apply it. Um, if you have resources or something that you think you can point me to, hey, I'm thrilled with that as well. So as I get back into this car, uh, feel free to help me out and educate me on this process. I've also um, found a few books that are specifically designed to help with the repair process. So I've ordered those, don't have them just yet. And I'll be able to do this car justice as I work on it uh, and do a faithful restoration as we bring this car back to life. That being said, thank you again to everyone who's joined me for this uh, because I'm excited to get into it. In the last video, this car barked off uh, like she had been started yesterday and I was so thrilled by that. Um, if you are the kind of person who watches Vice Grip Garage or any of these other guys who are doing uh, revivals, uh, restorations, so on and so forth, trying to bring these old cars back to life, a lot of times it doesn't go that easy. And I have, I think, a lot to thank um, to my sister-in-law's father and grandfather for taking good care of this car and for keeping it protected over the last 40 years as it sat waiting for this moment when it can come back. But that being said, we got it to fire, but it's not running on its own. So I need to go ahead and do some replacements and repairs and work on the fuel system. Um, today, I'm gonna replace the fuel pump and see if we can get this thing to run on its own. But before we do that, I mentioned toward the end of the video last week, managed to break one of these brittle old uh, coolant lines. It's one of the uh, lines that runs back to the heater core and uh, it was brittle. I touched it while I was working on stuff and it just snapped. Uh, so I've got some new line. I'm gonna go ahead and replace both of those. Um, ultimately, we're gonna be going through this whole car and replacing a lot of the serviceable items uh, to make it uh, as reliable as possible. Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and replace those now because I need to fix that leak before we go too far up the road. Then once I've got those coolant lines replaced, then we're gonna jump right back into the fuel system. I've got a new fuel pump. I'm gonna go ahead and replace that. See if we can get this thing running with its own pump, uh, still using uh, an, out, an external fuel tank, and I have a feeling we're not gonna to get to this today, um, but I do have a new fuel tank for it as well. May crawl under there and at least investigate it, though I probably won't have time to actually replace it today. And then I've also got a carburetor rebuild kit. Again, my time is limited today, so I don't know if I'll have time to actually uh, do the carb rebuild in this video, um, especially because that's another thing I've never done before. So it's gonna be a learning curve for me. Um, but anyway, all that being said, we're gonna do all of these things, like I said in the first video, 
it's gonna take time. And uh, I'm a busy guy, I stay very, very busy. I come out here and work as I have time. Um, so uh, bear with me uh, as this process will probably take a while. But anyway, for today, gonna go ahead and get started, replacing a couple of coolant lines. Um, I'll keep you posted on how that's going. And then we'll get into uh, the fuel system and see if we can get this car running and idling on its own, sucking fuel from its own fuel pump. So with that being said, let's get started. All righty, guys, just to kind of give you an idea of what we're working with here, uh, we have these two coolant lines right here uh, that run back underneath the battery box to uh, the heater core. So I'm probably going to go ahead and have to remove that battery box just to make life easier uh, so I can see under there. Uh, hopefully that'll come off without too much effort. Uh, but as you can see, uh, this coolant lines run right over here and it's this top one here that broke off uh, and it was just as brittle as could be. It was holding on by a thread and I've gone ahead and popped that off. So we're gonna go ahead and remove these clamps on this end, remove this battery box and hopefully uh, this cut to size tubing that I've got here uh, will do the job. So I'm gonna go ahead and put you guys on a little time lapse while I'm working and uh, we'll catch up with you here in just a few. Wow. That line was crispy. Uh, okay, well now I gotta clean the rest of this off of this one. And uh, that might be interesting, but bear with me. All right, it appears that I didn't have my camera on for the last few minutes, struggling to get those on there. Um, the nipple that you're attaching to is much longer on the heater core end than it is on, I guess, the water pump end or um, the engine end. Uh, so anyway, finally did get them all on there. I went ahead for now and I'm continuing to use these old school style, uh, you maybe see them a little better over here, old school tile hose clamps. Uh, they seem like they're uh, pretty stout and they look more appropriate in this engine bay. I may eventually have to switch it over. As you can see, people have used modern hose clamps in here already, although I will be replacing the other radiator hoses later, uh, other coolant hoses later. Uh, but for now, anyway, these are now replaced uh, with brand new hose. Um, I need to put the battery box back in, although I may wait until after I've done what else I've got going on in here so that... Uh, have as much room as possible. Um, but anyway, that's done. I'm gonna go ahead and drop a little more coolant in it and um, we will uh, move on. Next step after a little more coolant is to go ahead and get this fuel pump out. And so uh, that is what I'm gonna start working on next. Anyway, just before I do that fuel pump and all that, I wanted to show you, here's a little piece of uh, the old hose that came out of there. This is the most brittle stuff I have ever seen in my life. And whatever this red is in the middle, whatever they made that out of, it's turned into some sort of like chalky stuff. So it crumbles, but it also sticks to everything. It's, it's absolutely disgusting. Anyway, it was long since overdue to get these out. They're done and new hoses in. Anyway, that being said, like I was saying before, I'm going to go ahead and get this fuel pump out and uh, get the new one in. So wish me luck on that because the next step is to try to get this car running on its own fuel system. Let's keep going. Uh, 
Alrighty, well, got the old fuel pump off the car. That was nice and easy, just a couple of bolts, and um, new pump. Now, as far as I can tell, new pump looks, I mean, it looks, it's bigger, it's chunkier, but it looks more or less the same. Uh, I think it'll fit just fine. Uh, that being said, when I went to install it, I ran into a little problem. This is one of the bolts that uh, held the old pump in the car, and when I put that in here, yeah, there's basically no thread sticking through. So that's obviously not going to work right now. We're trying to drop it. So anyway, ran down to the store, picked up some new ones, about a half inch longer. Hopefully that will work just fine. Meanwhile, I lost one of my gloves. Great. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and put you guys back on the tripod and try to get this uh, new fuel pump actually installed right down there all right well another fail first of all i forgot to put the camera on so i just installed and then uninstalled this new pump here's the old pump can you see the source of the problem here yeah the uh the input and output on the new pump are smaller than that on the old pump so while this pump does physically bolt up and matches just fine on this end, yeah, not gonna work on this end. So this thing's been soaking with fuel for a little over a week now, since we were trying to get it started last week. And I don't know if it's gonna work or not, but I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall this one and see if we can get this bird running on the old pump. And we'll probably still replace this at some point, but at this point, this pump that I've got is not gonna work. So we're gonna try again with the old pump, see what we can do, and uh, we'll go from there. So, camera's running. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall the old one. All right, old pump reinstalled. Let's go ahead and hook up some fuel to it again and see what happens. Sliding since I don't remember when In and out of consciousness While others might be stressing now We rely on our facade to help us out
Alrighty. I tried to prime <laughs> our uh, rigged up fuel system over here uh, with uh, just a little squirt bottle of fuel. Uh, so hopefully we got fuel all the way through there. And I'm gonna go ahead and dump a little bit of weed eater trimmer gas oil mix here into the carb so we don't dry out the top end. Pull my light off of there. And I'm not sure that that battery's gonna have enough uh, juice to crank, uh, but we're gonna give it a shot. And if it doesn't, I'll hook up the, uh, I'll hook up the, uh, yep, you know what I'm trying to say. Hook up the battery jumper to it. Anyway, give a little shot here in the carb and let's see what happens. Well, we got her to bark off for a second with the fuel I put in the car, but I'm gonna go ahead and put uh, put the battery on the jumper. I don't think we got enough juice there. All right, that ought to be enough to get her going. Pull that off so it doesn't fall in the fan. And a uh, little more fuel down her throat. All right, is that enough or too much? I don't know, probably too much. Let's give it a shot. All right, I'm gonna move you guys over so you can take a look at the fuel in the filter for me. And hopefully, you guys can tell me, is there actually fuel flowing through this filter? Right there. All right, I'm gonna put a light on it so you can see it a little bit better. But you keep an eye on that right there. Let's see if we can pull those up out of the way. There you go, and where'd my light go? All right, guys. Can you see that? Nope, that's right in the way. There we go. Plenty of light. All right, keep an eye on that fuel filter. Tell me if the fuel's, you know, going that way. Let's give it another shot. Ah, lost the light. Well guys, did the fuel flow? Could you see it? What happened? Alrighty guys, since I'm working solo today uh, and things aren't going quite as, uh, quite as uh, smoothly as I'd like, what I've done is I've gone ahead and rigged up the old remote starter switch here. Let's see here, there we go. And I'm gonna try starting this bird from the outside. Uh, Hopefully using this and being able to maintain pouring fuel in there, hopefully we can get her to actually start sucking down her own fuel. So 
Well, let's give this another try. All right. That's probably too much again, but this time we are going to. Oh, brother. Came unhooked here. Yep, there we go. All right. Now we're going to try starting her from the outside. Fire the hole. Come on. Fire the hole. All right. Maybe my jump box is going a little flat. Let's see what we got going on here. Try hooking this up a little tighter. Seems like it's on there fairly tight. And, uh, all right, well, let's give it another shot. Man, she just sounds weak still. Give her a little throttle here. few moments later All right, a few takeaways from this experience. Well, first of all, we were able to actually get her to run for a little bit longer, so that's good. Uh, hear it run for a few minutes. She sounds really nice. Um, however, it's clearly still not sucking down fuel on its own, and uh, that's going to be a problem. So I'm going to have to go back to uh, square one here, trying to find a new replacement pump. It was a real bummer because I was hoping to have it running completely on its own today, drawing from the tank. That being said, um, since there's only but so much I can do here, I am going to go ahead and crawl underneath back there and get myself nice and dirty and uh, take a look at uh, the current fuel tank situation because I have a replacement tank for it. And uh, while I'm not planning to get her in there today, um, we are going to go ahead and take a peek and see what we're going to be dealing with. So let's go ahead and crawl under the car. Alrighty guys, gonna climb under there here in a second and uh, take a look at the fuel tank situation. Went ahead and put a little air in the tires, figuring maybe I'd gain myself a little extra space. Uh, yeah, it didn't really help much. <laughs> so uh, it is what it is. But there you go, there's our fuel door uh, cap. I mean, shouldn't really be much anything in there since it's 
supposedly rusted through, but there's that. So let's climb up underneath here and see what there is to see. Just about to climb in here and discover this little gem. So apparently my shop has snakes. Haven't seen too many snakes since I've lived in Indiana, but uh, there are a few and apparently one has made my shop uh, at the very least, it's changing room, but <laughs> anyway, hopefully he's not around right now. Gotta go ahead and climb under here. All right, there's our fuel tank right there. Go ahead and go wide angle so you can see a little better. And, uh, well, honestly, it, <laughs> there's not much to be gleaned from what I can see under here right now. I mean, she's crusty, but not horrible. Ooh, our exhaust is gonna need help. We got going in there, anything? Just moth stuff, spider webs and stuff. Anyway, uh, so, ooh, hmm. Yeah, can you see that? So apparently our exhaust <laughs> is in worse shape than I thought. I'm not sure where all that water came from, unless that's coolant rolling its way back here. Well, so there's not a lot to learn about this fuel tank other than, well, there it is. So, uh, but I'm glad I did climb under here because now I can see before this bird gets driven anywhere, it's going to need a little help in the, uh, the old exhaust department here. Yeah. Hmm. Well, anyway, there we go. I'm going to get up off this floor now. Thought I'd go ahead and take a little bit closer look at our exhaust situation. First of all, that is coolant, so that's not the end of the world. It has just come back from the front where we had that leak. So, you know, whatever. Looks to me like somebody rigged this up in the past with some wire, if you can see that hanging down there. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, she's pretty well, uh, there you go. She just rusted through, fell off. Oops, sorry, there you go, better view. So, exhaust works sooner than expected. Very nice. That would explain, however, oh, a little too close here for you. That might explain, though, why didn't really see any smoke coming out the back. I mean, she's a good runner, but still would have expected some smoke out the back. Yeah, well, maybe it was just wherever that... <laughs> wherever the leak is, wherever the exhaust actually comes out. Don't even know if the exhaust makes it all the way to the back uh, here to this muffler. It might even be coming out right up underneath the engine. I did see a little smoke up front. Anyway, well, more good news. Now we know what we need to work on. All right, guys. So I guess on that note, that is where we're going to have to call this video for today. Um, you know, it was a mixed bag. We got some things accomplished. We learned some things. I will say it didn't go exactly as I was expecting, but uh, you know, we got our coolant lines replaced. Uh, hopefully there's no leaks. We'll find that out better once we're able to actually run her for some length of time. Uh, but we got those, <coughs> excuse me, we got those two bad uh, coolant hoses replaced, got her topped off with coolant. Um, learned that our fuel pump ain't gonna work. That one is, uh, you know, physically fits, but it, the uh, connector's wrong. So uh, I'll be on the hunt for a good one. If you've got any resources, go ahead and drop me a link or send me an email or something. Um, those of you who are experts on these things would love to hear from you on the best kind of pump for this car. Remember, it's got the straight six. Um, we also, uh, of course, have a replacement fuel tank. So we may crawl under there and get that replaced here in the next video. Uh, really, my goal in the next video is to get this thing running like today was supposed to be. Uh, she obviously wants to run. Um, well, I say that, but maybe she just wants to nap. She's been taking her long naps for 40 years now, uh, since 1982. Um, and you know what? When you get older, it's a little harder to wake up from those long naps. But that being said, we have signs of her waking up. Uh, when we pour a little fuel down her, she does run. Uh, sounds good while doing so. Uh, so I'm very, very hopeful. So my goal for the next one is find the appropriate pump and get that replaced, have her actually pumping fuel so she'll run, get that tank replaced so we can actually run it off its own fuel tank and not have to worry about an external situation. Uh, and then um, we may go ahead and jump into uh, trying to uh, work on this carb a little bit and get it 
uh, rebuilt, cleaned up. Uh, there are so many mechanical things we can get into and it's just gonna be one thing at a time. This car is not gonna be uh, fixed and on the road uh, in the next couple of videos, it is going to take a little bit of time. So I appreciate you bearing with me. While today's video didn't go quite how I uh, planned, how I hoped, um, you know, every every little bit of progress is a good thing. So thank you for watching along and being a part of it with me. Uh, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I have been overwhelmed by the number of folks who have um, watch that first video on this car, the first Crossroads Rebuild Classic Edition here, trying to revive this family 55 uh, Chevy Post, you tell me, but 210 two-door. Um, anyway, I'm so so thankful for each and one of you um, old and new subscribers for jumping on and watching that. For all of you new subscribers, thank you so much for that. Love to hear from you, so go ahead and drop me a comment down below. Thumbs up, of course, is always nice, so appreciate those as well. But go ahead and stay tuned for that next video. I'll bring it to you as soon as I'm able to. Like I said, I have a very busy life, but I've been doing my best to get out here and get some work done because uh, I'm excited to have this car running and hopefully even driving, you know, in the next few months. I'd love to take it for its first actual kind of road, not road trip, but drive, you know, get it out of the garage for the first time in, in a decade or more. Uh, well, several decades, wouldn't it? But uh, anyway, stay tuned for that. I've got other projects I'll be working on as well. Um, a few follow-up videos to some of the rebuilds that I've been doing um, in the past. I've got a new project that's waiting. It's been waiting a long time, but I got a new project I'm gonna get started on at some point as well. Maybe while we're waiting on parts for this at some point, I'll get that one started. So stay tuned for all that. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Like, comment, share, subscribe, you know the drill. And uh, really appreciate all of you. Thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you in the next episode.